let me go through a short uh, recap of my trading session today here's how my account looks like um, a losing trade in ACAD a winner in EGN still riding 100 shares at 2 points profit right now doing good uh, T was a very small loser just 4 cent loser and ZM was very nice until it pulled back up so finished with this one I'm going to finish my day up $800 so that's okay nothing uh, spectacular nothing uh, too interesting but let me quickly go through the trades today so uh, I'll start with ACAD that was uh, the first trade and here's how it was um, it was posted uh, over 41 originally Scott posted it over 4150 which was the right entry point and it did not trigger so ACD as you can see here is up 65% right now it was even a bit more than that when the stock is starting up that much you would expect it to gap and go meaning to continue higher if it fails and moves down just like it did you would expect it to reverse and move higher just that you need a good reversal point and we did not find that we did not find that this could have been it but I don't know right now it's just going sideways at the point where we planned it 4150 as Scott posted it and it did not trigger was right over here that should have been the entry and then we thought well I think that was more like a greedy too much greedy thought that well let's take it over 40 I mean if it's gonna go 41 40 over 41 sorry instead of 40 and I posted it over 40 but I also mentioned it's going to be a bit early maybe too early which it was therefore half size over 41 and add the other at the right trigger point which is over 4150 so I thought there's a good chance it's going to make it over 4150 it did not it stopped just before that that's the same my whole number sometimes you find some sellers right there it just stopped a few cents before and came down and uh, took us out once it moved under the low so that was a very clear uh, exit point and we were right to move out because it moved down several points afterwards and maybe now it's reversing maybe not I don't know so the lesson here in ACAD is if you get in at the point where you're not sure you've got yourself a good technical entry point come in with small size take the risk if you think like you've got a good chance to succeed maybe that was greed maybe that was a good idea I mean looking back before of course it failed I don't know but I'm glad I took it with smaller size and then was planning to add it did not work out that was a loser second trade was T T was posted um, I posted it over 37.85 now again same story if you watch T it's up 3.7 percent very strong um, take a look at the daily it's beautifully trending higher huge gap up today good chance to continue higher and it did continue higher now if you watch 37.85 that is the reversal point and again it's kind of similar to what ACAD did and failed T did not fail T did not fail I failed I'll, I'll, I'll explain soon so T initially moved up down you look for the reversal because it's very very strong more likely to gap and go over 3% and then 37.85 should be a nice entry point you've got yourself a good uh, stop loss somewhere around here around 25 cents so if I'm risking around 25 cents I should get a 25 cent partial I got more than that just that I wasn't I wasn't smart enough to move out at the highs well I was just about to click the button I was very very close to clicking the button look at how it behaved look at this huge move up with a lot of volume we talked about this recently that's a wide range candle just uh, look at this topping tail here that was all green that's a wide range candle with extended volume look at it here wide range candle with extended volume we just learned that just that I wasn't quick enough I was not quick enough and I could and should have gotten my partial here at 40 cents so I had a 40 cent winner a bit less 38 something like that well over my target point too slow 
didn't take my partial and had to move out. Uh, but and another thing to learn here, I think, is the fact that I moved out just a few cents down. So I'm stuck in a trade that is just going sideways. I have no advantage anymore. The fact that it moved up a little bit then, that, that was not enough for my target. And I would have had my full stop loss if I would have continued on holding it. So it was down a few cents or up a few cents. doesn't matter if it's up a few cents or down a few cents. There's no reason to hold to a stock that is not uh, going your way. So I did write by moving out of uh, T at a very small loser. It's only a $200 loser, which is relatively very small for me. Still is, of course, a loser. But, you know... That should be a lesson too. It doesn't go your way, move out. And as you can see, the end result is um, not so nice. And then I continued. So next one I found was RGEN. And the nice thing about RGEN, as you can see it here, the stock is down 11%, which is uh, approximately where I um, came into it. So trending lower, trending lower, beautiful downtrend. What I like about it is the fact that most of the 10% it did without a gap. It did like 3% with a gap and then another 7%. So the momentum is down. Imagine a stock that is coming down 7%. That's quite a lot. That's quite a lot. What I did not like that much was the volume, although the spread was manageable. It was quite a small spread for a relatively low volume. But I did like the technical formation posted it under $84 and it worked like a charm. Look at this three point move, uh, small pullback took me out there at a small partial, a nice partial, and then continued to come down and that was um, a very nice trade. So RGEN, what you need to remember here is the momentum, the fact that it did most of it without a gap, just continued to come down. That's, that's why you should be watching the top 20 leaks, which what I did, I found out RGEN and um, ZM, which is the next one I'm going to show you now, just from the top 20 list, watch a stock that wasn't there when we started because it was just a small gap down and then came into the top 20 because it moved down 10% but uh, you know without a gap so it wasn't there pre-market time or maybe it wasn't I didn't notice it but then it came on the list and gave us a nice chance to short so ZM was my uh, last trade and, th th and, and that is quite the same idea ZM is down now 5% approximately 5% it was a bit more than 5% when I came across it now look at this one again it wasn't on the top 20 list it's on the 20 list right now. And the reason it's on the 20 list is because it's down 5% without a gap. So once it came into the top 20 list, I found it. And that was the point I was looking for. This $80 mark short here, which is beautiful. It's beautiful because it's coming down 5% without a gap. Imagine all the pressure as it comes down. It has nice volume, almost 3 million shares right now. And um, at that point of the 80, bounced several times, several times, it's a whole number. Just look at how many times it bounced off the 80, came down again, moved down under the 80, gave us plenty of space to click the button, enough time to click the button and move in, shorted it, came down two points. That was a lovely trade. And that was it. I don't see any reason now to risk my account uh, any longer. Um, I've got two nice winners. Maybe I should rule out uh, T because it did work out well. I just wasn't quick enough. So theoretically, I picked the right three stocks here. The wrong trade in ACAD. My winners are a bit bigger than my losers manage my loser to be relatively small in T and relatively small in ACD, which is the main lesson I think you should take from this uh, recap that we're doing right now. You're not sure, like ACAD, you're not sure you got the technical formation, lower your size. T is not going your way. Although I missed my partial point, it was a great trade, should have been a great trade, should have had a partial there. You're not sure afterwards you've got the right uh, position you're not sure it's going to go your way move out small loser 
and when you really got a good trade let it try I'm not sure I let it try the right way both ZM and RGEN but they're certainly bigger than my average loser therefore I'm going to finish my day up for uh, a Monday morning and I'm happy to be green I did not come with a lot of advantage today to the marking to the trading uh, session because I did not have a lot of uh, picks just look at my pick list that was uh, very small an interesting list really so that's it for me traders thank you very much for watching and don't forget to join us in the world series of day traders it's just about to start you can sign up the next uh, three days I believe until the 12th September and um, if you're wondering what it's all about here's the video and you've got a link below to sign up you can do it it doesn't cost anything and it's going to be just absolutely great to see you there World Series of Day Trading. You've read and heard about it everywhere. Now, let me tell you what it's all about. The World Series of Day Trading is the largest, most important, and most dominant trading-related competition in the world. Every few months, the day trading community holds its breath for six trading days to see who is the leading talent in the world of trading. Each competitor gets a $240,000 demo account to trade with for the six trading days. The goal is to reach the end of the competition with the highest account balance and without getting eliminated. Each competitor must trade on at least four active trading days out of the six, and you're not allowed to hold any position overnight. On a given trading day, you may not lose more than $3,500, and you can't be down more than $12,000 at any point in the competition. If you reach the max loss, you are automatically eliminated. It's an open competition, and anyone can apply whether you have many years of track record in the market or very little experience. While we are powered by TradeNet, you can apply regardless of where you obtained your education and irrespective of the trading platform you use. The prizes for the champion and the runners-up are fantastic. The champion wins a $240,000 funded account access plus a $6,000 TradeNet voucher. Each one of the top 20 traders wins access to a funded account. The total funded account access fund surpasses $3 million. You need to know that as a competitor, you deserve to be a part of a team. Your team leader will guide you throughout the series, so it's better if you follow him and his social media channel closely. As a team member, you also enjoy the internal competition with your teammates. The best trader in your team wins an $80,000 funded account value, while the two runner-ups gets a $14,000 funded account access. Your team is also competing with the other teams, so if your team is among the top three, then the leading players on your team can get even larger prizes. Got more questions? That's okay. Fill in the details below, and we will get back to you shortly to explain. Now it's time for you to go ahead and sign yourself up with one of the teams. Hurry up and sign up right now.